the, the funny thing about this is I think a number of you have seen different sort of versions of what I'm doing. Um, and I don't think anybody has seen all of these versions, but I think a number of people have seen at least one. So we're gonna do a similar thing. Uh, and uh, we're gonna, again, we're going to take this synthesis and analysis approach. And this time um, we're going to synthesize um, results of a polynomial function. So, um, you know, polynomial function, uh, ax squared plus bx plus c is, is uh, quadratic. You know, we could say ax to the third plus bx uh, squared plus um, cx plus d, right? Um, generally, polynomial function, uh, x is going to be uh, exponentiated and there's going to be a coefficient on x. So I'm just going to write a function called, um, well, polynomial, I don't know, def poly polynomial. And we're gonna want an x value. And let's say, uh, let's say this is fourth order. Yeah, let's say fourth order, just not to, to not have this get out of hand. So fourth order polynomial just means ax to the fourth uh, plus bx to the third plus cx squared. Um, so I'm saying A, B, C, et cetera. So uh, A, B, C, D, E, right? Actually, I'll do intercept. And this is a very easy function to write. It's just going to be AX, <laughs> almost made that mistake, AX uh, to the fourth plus BX to the third um, plus CX, squared plus d x plus the intercept. And we're just returning that value. So something to think about, uh, well, let, let, I'll run this really quick, um, just so that we can make sure it's working in a way that we expect. And I'm gonna pass in uh, three for x, and I'm gonna do uh, 0.5 for a, 0.7, um, 1.5, 2, and 5. Is that the right count? Yep. And if I print this, we're going to get some kind of value. 83.9. Great. Um, if I change x to 2, we get 28.6. If I change it to 1, 9.7. So we can kind of get a sense of the shape of this thing already, right? What happens if I put in um, negative five? Okay, so, right? Like we can imagine the plot of this thing pretty easily. Um, so again, this is sort of this closed form thing and uh, that's great. That's great for what we're doing. Um, and we're not gonna make this a random sampling approach. Uh, the only random sampling that we're gonna do today was that binomial random sampling. Um, so let's analyze this, let's get a sense of it. Um, I'm going to build uh, a dictionary. And dictionaries are just really good for this sort of thing. Um, I'm gonna say, um, let's just call it polynomial uh, dictionary and uh, we're gonna pass in anything. Oh, we do wanna pass in something. We wanna pass in a low and a high, and we also wanna pass in all of these. So uh, low is actually going to be our low X, and high is gonna be our high X. All right, so um, how do we want to proceed? Let's, let's just say we create a dictionary. This is gonna look a lot like the last problem. Uh, I'm gonna say for, uh, for, so I wanna do, no, no, I actually wanna use X. For X in range, low X to high X, and uh, I wanna be inclusive of high X, so I'm gonna say high X plus one. 
we're going to say um, D, to be safe, actually, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say Y. This is our Y, right? This is our Y value. Y is going to get a fourth order polynomial on this exact same thing. X, A, B, C, D uh, intercept. And then I'm going to say, because uh, there's a chance, depending on the polynomial, that we're going to get the same Y value, right? Like uh, you can imagine a wavy form where uh, a horizontal line will pass through multiple points. Okay. So, um, oh, but the thing is, we don't want to, we actually want our keys to be X values. So we're never going to duplicate X. X is going to be unique every time. So uh, we don't have to worry about that. So I'll just say um, D sub X is going to get, um, well, it's going to get Y. Uh, and, and kind of what I was alluding to is uh, this concept of checking membership. So um, I could say if X not in D sub X, then D sub X, you know, I could just set this to zero um, and then have D sub X get Y. That doesn't actually make sense here, does it? Right, because we're not getting counts out of this. We're getting actual you know, values. So I don't need to check membership here. I can just say, uh, I can assume that X never existed before and I'm just gonna set D sub X because I'm assigning it. So um, we're going to get this. We're going to say, um, I'll just call it poly N is gonna get uh, poly N uh, dictionary. And let's just pass in these values that we had before. And I'll have to modify something here too. So, so this is A, right? So we need a low X and a high X. Uh, let's do negative 10 for our low X. We'll do 10 as our high X. And then for K, V, right? For key value in this dictionary dot items, we're going to print, um, I'll just do this as an F string and tab and I don't need the tab here. I'll just do a space, so key value, I'm gonna save it and let's see what it is. It's an error. Oh, hmm. You're returning Y. Oh, thank you. Need to return D. Huh, return. Here's the fun part of coding. Um, Unsupported operating time for a star dict and int. Oh, what am I doing there? Turning D, that's on line three. A. Oh, interesting. I have a name collision, I think. Um, of course I have a name collision. I just named this D. All right, uh, let's give it a better name. Uh, that's a terrible name still. I'll just do that. All right. So what other errors do we have? Nothing, okay, awesome. And we can uh, look at this. And you know, you can imagine if this was turned on its side, uh, right? It, it would basically be a plot, right? We're looking at, well, negative 10 is this 4,435 and uh, 10 is 5,875. I mean, yeah, um, this, is, this is the shape of this, of this math, of this polynomial function. 